there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and say we're in Marrakesh, Morocco for 10 things that shock tourists when they come here to Morocco. And the first thing that's going to shock you when you come to Morocco is your first Balak moment. If you're not sure what Balak means, it's just kind of like watch out, hey, heads up, pay attention, and you're going to have that a lot. Whether you're going down the street and cars are going by and a donkey's going by and a bike's going by and like, oh, or how you cross the street, oh my god, what do I do here? You do have those moments, but the best moments of it is when you're in the Medina, okay, and you're going through and you're walking through Medina and like, bah, and you're like, whoa, what's going on? And there's a donkey going by with construction equipment or there's a, a moped with like a trailer on the back going by with a thousand other people. You do have that, hey, pay attention moment when you are here. That's the first shock you'll have. And it might be when they drop you off from the airport and say, hey, you gotta walk it down here to your Medina. Just the first, like, first five minutes, you'll have your first moment. So just prepared for that first shock, okay? Now, the second shock you're gonna have when you are here is the amount of haggling you're gonna have to do. Look, negotiating and bargaining, that's par for the course here in Morocco. So be ready for it. And the thing is, they're not trying to rip you off. That's just how business is done here. So make sure you're prepared to spend some time bargaining for that rug, bargaining for that cool lamp you see, bargaining for the t-shirts for your kids. That's just kind of how things work here, okay? So some advice I have for you when you are negotiating realize that this price they're starting with is going to be way more than what you should actually pay. And that kind of waist high starting price will actually probably start a little bit higher if you're in a very big touristy place like the Medina here in Marrakesh or in Fez or something like that. So the price you should pay is about 25 to 50% less than where they start, just to give you that heads up, okay? Also, if you don't feel comfortable buying stuff, it's okay. They're not gonna be pissed off forever that you didn't buy something. They know how these things work. And you know what? The key thing to negotiating is know what the price that you're happy to pay. Once you have a price you're okay to pay, then it's no big deal, okay? So do take that experience and also use that bargain experience to get a lot of the mint tea when you're here because you will get a lot of mint tea when you're doing your bargaining, okay? And one of those things that gets frustrated with that bargaining is you'll agree with the price, whether it is with a taxi or whether it is with you know, a, a shop or whatever, and they'll never have change. So always have the correct change that you're bargaining with to make your life easier, okay? Now the third thing that's gonna shock when you come here, kind of wraps together the first two though, is that your Medina experience. Look, the Medina, the, the old town, the shop part of town where all the small you know, lanes are and stuff like that, it's gonna shock when you're there because one, you're gonna get lost, and that's okay. It's okay to get lost. The people here are really nice. They'll help you find your way out if you do get lost. But it is such a shocking experience when you see all the sights, the sounds, the colors. Oh my God, all the spices that are out there. When you're seeing them chopping up the meat and hanging it right there and you're like, whoa, this is kind of cool. But it can be pretty overwhelming and kind of shocking for some people. I know when we going around, we've seen tourists that are about to like lose it. So if you feel like you're about to lose it, go into a Riyadh, that's a, that's a hotel kind of thing that usually has a restaurant with it and stuff like that to take a, take a break collect your stuff and come back out because honestly going to Medina's and going exploring these things is one of the most important things you need to do when you're here but also can be really shocking when you have all the people going by remember I talked about the well you know the, the things going by you have that but you got to do it when you are here because you'll be shocked how much you're gonna love it or how much you'll drive you a little crazy but it's something you have to do because it really is a really frenetic experience now the next thing's gonna shock when you come here so I know I talked about you know the, the haggling and stuff like that and and the craziness and things like that but you with all the haggling all the craziness the fourth thing that's gonna shock you is how helpful and kind the people are here in Morocco I mean they will go out of their way to help you okay yeah I know some people they'll say oh we're well, doing that for the tip but yeah some people do that but in general the people here have been fantastic so helpful give us so many ideas of things to see do eat explore different parts of the country and stuff it's just such a wonderful experience here and you want to meet those people because people really are awesome and the thing is is those friendly people what, what really shocks you is how they'll switch from French to Arabic throw in some English here a little Spanish there this is a multicultural country a multilingual country and it really shocks tourists when they realize look you can get by in French and some Arabic and Berber and and you know if you know some Spanish some parts will get you by there and English in the tourism ministry will get you by there I mean it's just such a, a shocking amazing experience with the people when you're here you will really love it and we've met some really fantastic people you know Michelle and Ilham and and, and, and our, our, our guide Abdul and there's all kinds of people people are, are Riyadh and stuff like that and our fans are from Morocco, when they heard we are coming here, all the wonderful, helpful information they've shared with us, man, that's one thing that shocks you, just how open and friendly the people really are, and that is kind of a cool thing. And the thing is, is when you're going and meeting all these people and talking to all these people, you're going to be exploring the Medinas and all this kind of stuff, eventually you might have to go to the bathroom. And that leads to the fifth thing that's going to shock you when you come here to Morocco is no toilet paper. 
look, when you have your uh oh moment, and it's not that bad here, but if you do have that uh oh moment, I gotta get to the bathroom real quick, and you're trying to find one, trying to find a public toilet, but when you get to it, you run by this lady in there, and you're like, what was she there for? And then you sit down and do your business and look around and go, there's no toilet paper. Look, you need to bring toilet paper with you. Now, I'm not saying bring a roll of toilet paper. What I'm saying is always have a couple packets of tissues with you just in case you need to go because you will be shocked how hard it is sometimes to find some toilet paper in the toilets, okay? Now, your hotel, no, you don't need to worry about it there. But it's when you're out and about, just have a heads up. That's why if you gotta go, maybe find a nicer restaurant or something like that so you can use theirs. Usually it's just for clients, so you buy a tea or something like that, but it's worth it just to relax because this is much more of a relax, chill out kind of country. Even if you really gotta go, take your time to relax, have the tea and go, all right? But always have that TP, all right? Now, the sixth thing that's gonna shock you when you come here actually has to do with the weather. Not really shocking that it's insanely hot here in the summer. I mean, the Sahara Desert is part of Morocco, okay? But the thing is, in the summertime, getting in the 50 Celsius, the, you know, the 100 degrees in Fahrenheit isn't uncommon. So what you need to make sure you're doing is cover up as much of your skin as possible when you're in that heat to protect you from the sun, okay? And wear light, loose-fitting clothes. That's gonna help out. But actually, the really shocking part about the weather is if you're coming here from November through March, it gets cold. I mean, if you're here in the evening, here in Marrakesh, you're wearing a jacket, you're wearing a sweatshirt. When we start exploring with our kids in the morning, they're chattering their teeth, so they put on their sweatshirts on and stuff like that. Now, during the day, it does warm up, but just be ready for in the evening. If you're gonna be exploring and stuff like that, you wanna be ready for it. Also, if you're going to the Sahara, you need to know is there's extreme temperature fluctuations during the day versus at night, okay? So be ready for that. And that's shock some tourists because they're not prepared for it, okay? So be prepared, bring the right kind of clothes, whether it's layering or long clothes and stuff like that, just to be ready for it, okay? Now, going thinking about the Sahara got me thinking another one of the shocks, and that is how big Morocco is. Look, a lot of people, they look at a map, and you look at a map, and you think, oh, Morocco, it's, it's a normal-sized country versus Germany or someplace else. What you don't realize is Morocco on a map has, like, the reverse Greenland effect. You know, if you look at Greenland on a map, it's huge, right? But in real life, Greenland's not really that big. Same thing, I mean, Iceland looks huge, but it's not really that big because it gets stretched out by the map. The thing is, here in Morocco, we're close to the equator, right? And so, therefore, we're more, like, to scale on the maps. And what you don't realize is this is a lot bigger than you really expect, okay? And so if you're going to be coming here, what I recommend is choose different regions to stay at, okay? There's kind of four different regions here in Morocco. You've got the coast, which is fantastic. You can go surfing. They're really developing a lot of resorts on there to make it a resort destination along the coastlines. It's really kind of a cool place to go, so you have that. You have the plains here, like with Marrakesh and Fez and things like that. You have the Sahara Desert, which you can go check out. The thing is, the Sahara Desert, you know, people tell you, oh, it's a day trip from here. No, it's not. It's eight to 10 hours in a car to get down to the Sahara Desert. I mean, it's, it's far to go. And then you have uh, the Atlas Mountains, okay, or the mountain regions. There's, you know, you have that. And so you have a, like a wide variety of regions that are here. So what I recommend is just pick a couple regions to explore. So maybe you do like Marrakesh and the Sahara, or you do the beaches in Marrakesh, or you do, you know, you, you, know, you do the mountains and something. You want to kind of mix it up, but don't get too much because it's such a big country. You're kind of shocked that, man, I want to spend all this time traveling around. When do I get it time to experience the country? So just have a heads up for that because a lot of people are kind of shocked when they see how big Morocco is. Okay, so just just be ready for that because you know what? If you want to go to the blue city, you know, and you're thinking, oh, it's going to be a day trip from Casablanca. No, that's like five hours. Okay, <laughs> or longer to get there. It's not that short. Now, the thing is, though, they actually have a good transportation network so you can take buses and, and stuff like that. The train network here is fine. You can take the train network to a lot of places. But just know it's going to take time because, wow, Morocco is actually a really big, long country. Now, the eighth thing that's going to shock you when you do come here to Morocco is the difference between the exterior architecture and the interior architecture of buildings. I mean, if you look at the exterior architecture here in Morocco, you're like, oh, okay, it's kind of like flat and it, like, is it stucco? I mean, it's not really that impressive. Aside from the mosque, they're gorgeous to look at. And the doorways, I mean, you'll see, all, I mean, just click on Morocco in Instagram, you'll see thousands of just insanely beautiful doorways that are there. Now, I will say, though, that that blue city is pretty cool to see from the outside, okay? I'll, I'll give them that. But in general, it's kind of like a bit, I would say, almost drab on the outside. But the thing is, you'll be shocked, is once you go through those beautiful doorways, once you walk into that Riyadh, the interior design here in Morocco 
is phenomenal. The true beauty, the true artwork, the true everything that is the, the architecture and design of this country is inside the buildings. So when you're going to the palaces, you're going to the riads, the hotels, stuff like that, if you're lucky enough to go to someone's home, you'll see that on the inside with those courtyards, with the, I mean, the, the geometric architecture, you know, the cedar wood artwork and the, and the, the, the plaster work and stuff like that. It's just really phenomenal. And you see it and you'll see, you know, the, the lamps and stuff like that, and the, the fixtures, it's just like, wow, this unbelievably gorgeous inside and all that beauty is inside in the architecture versus outside, okay? But I will say it is beautiful to see the moss and it is beautiful to see the doorways and stuff like that. So you do want to see those. But I think the next shock I have for you is if you're not Muslim, you don't get to go in the mosque. Now in Casablanca, you can go to the big mosque there. But in general, here in Morocco, unless you're Muslim, you can't go in and see the mosque. And the thing is, from the outside, they're gorgeous. And if you know like how much better the architecture is inside a usual building in Morocco versus outside, you're like, oh, I wish I could go in because it is gorgeous inside of those. So if you're not sure what it looks like, go, go, go to the internet, click on some pictures and look that way. Because unless you're Muslim, you're not gonna be able to go into those. Now, another thing that might shock you when you do come here is actually you'll notice there's a lot of stray cats. I mean, you'll see stray cats all over the place and all over the country, but no stray dogs. Well, very few stray dogs, but the cats, they're all over the place. So remember, you don't want to pet the stray cats because they might have fleas or disease or anything else. So leave the stray cats alone. I know they're very cute and they have lots of little kittens going around, but just have a heads up for that one, okay? <laughs> the next thing that's going to shock you come here is actually a lot of people think, oh, you know, Morocco's a Muslim country. There's no alcohol and stuff like that. Oh, no, 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 no. Here in Morocco, you'll be shocked. You can have some great wine when you're here in Morocco. We've actually, the Riyadh's we've gone to, they've had alcohol on the menu. And the thing is, the wines here, you can get a gray wine or a red wine or a white wine. There's some really nice wines that are here. And we've sat back and said, you know what? We're going to sit in our Riyadh at night. You know, the kids are downstairs, you know, in the room, relaxing. We're like, you know what, guys? We're going to go upstairs to uh, the top of the Riyadh and just enjoy some wine and maybe some, or some mint tea if you like. There's those things. But it's really kind of laid back because the thing is, the country is pretty safe to go to. So the kids are relaxing there. We're up there having some nice wine and stuff like that. It is really kind of a shocking thing. Like, wow, I didn't think I'd get to drink when I'm here in Morocco, but you can't. And you get to have really good wine, which is like awesome, okay? Continuing on with the, with the, uh, the vices that are out there, you will also be shocked about how much you will smell and see people, men, you know, smoking hashish either on the street or other places. You're like, whoa, what's going on here? I smell this quite a bit. Look, even as a tourist, you need to realize it's not legal, okay? The locals, they're not going to get arrested for it, but you probably will. So do be careful with that, but don't be shocked if you smell it quite often or you see guys in back, you know, back alleyways, you know, in the evening time, you know, sitting there and having a smoke with their friend, just chatting away, okay? So just have a heads up for that one. And then the last thing that's going to shock when you come here, I'm going to kind of put a bunch of the negative shocks together here because honestly, we've had a wonderful experience here in Morocco. We highly recommend people coming here. I mean, it's wonderful people, wonderful food, um, the sights, the design, all this kind of stuff. It's just really a fantastic place to visit. The natural beauty here, I mean, just all the different regions, it's just a really fantastic place. But there are some negative shocks. One thing, the scams that are here. Look, if you're a tourist and you're going through Medina, have your bag on the front, okay? You will see pickpockets when there's a lot of busy areas and tourists, just like anywhere in the world. So that might be shocking. It's like, wait, I have to deal with this all the time. But the scams though, like the scams with the taxis where they'll overcharge you. Look, make sure you're negotiating your taxi rate before you get in. So we've agreed on the price, so we're good to go. Okay, so that could be something. Another shock, it's not maybe not necessarily a bad shock, but one of those things that kind of annoy people is all the tipping you're going to need to do when you're here. Yes, you do tip at the restaurants when you eat there, but also you tip for the little service things. You're always going to have a tip for a guide. You're going to have a tip for the person that helps you at the Riyadh if they're giving you extra stuff and doing extra work for you and things like that. So make sure you have small bills, small coins that you can easily tip people. You have to do that. And with that tipping, what you have to realize, if you're going to be taking pictures, you might be shocked that one, people won't let you take their pictures, or two, you're going to have to pay to take their pictures. So here in Morocco, if you're going to take pictures of people, you know, like settings and stuff like that, it's no big deal. You're on the market, whatever. You're taking normal pictures, stuff like that. Yeah, that, 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 that's usually fine. But the thing is, if you're walking through, you're taking pictures of people's shops or taking pictures of people, you need to ask them. 
And then some people say, no, no, no. We can be happy. Like, no, 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 thank you. I'm like, all right. You need to respect them for that. And a lot of people get shot the way. I can't just take a picture when I walk around. No, you can't. Okay, you need to respect the people that way. So that can be kind of shocking for people. Also, with those picture shocks, is when you're seeing the, 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 the snake charmers and stuff like that, people are like, I'm just going to take pictures of that. Look, don't be shocked if they come after you. Say, hey, look, you got to pay me to take their picture. Because think about it, that's their way of life. That's how they're paying their bills, okay? So it's in the shops or on the street or, or the, 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 shop, the, the snake charmers and stuff like that. That's how they're making their living. So have those coins so you can tip them. And it might be shocking how much you end up tipping when you are here, okay? And then the last kind of shock that's out there and all these shocks you know i've seen a vast improvement from what i've we read online and we prepared for the the scams and the the tipping and all this kind of stuff is a lot less than it, they make it sound like it is all online but there's one issue that you really need to know about and that is actually female travelers when they do come here they might be shocked of how different they're treated versus male travelers when they're here okay i know jocelyn has noticed things like she's not included in some of the conversations when she tries to negotiate prices there's no negotiations I, it's like you know our, our guide super on the up and up guy awesome guys like hey look if you want to go shopping, even if you want to do the negotiations, have your husband go with you. Or, you know, if you're a female traveler by yourself, if you meet some, you know, there's somebody at the at the Riyadh you're staying at, like ask them, hey, just come shopping with me. Because it seemed like that got a lot better, like bargaining prices versus other things. So just have a heads up for that, you know. And there's a, a Moroccan Mama is a really great website that talks about female travelers in Morocco. So that might be something for female travelers to check out before they come. So you don't get like super shocked when you're here. The thing is, though, you will love Morocco. The people are fantastic the food is amazing you'll be shocked how much you really enjoy your time here even if it is uh, you know a five hour train ride all the beauty you'll see when you're there it's just one of these really fun places to visit i really hope you do come to morocco and have a great time if you want to learn more maybe the don'ts of visiting morocco or five things you love and hate about visiting marrakesh or maybe you want to learn about the food here check us out on our website at waltersworld.com we're also on twitter facebook instagram youtube and we really appreciate your likes subscriptions we hope you have a great time here in morocco but we won't be shocked if you do, because this is a fantastic place. Bye from Marrakesh.